I'm Ray Austin, District Manager for Mine Safety and Health Administration, Metal and Non-Metal. And I'm Ray McKinney, District Manager for Coal. Ray, many of the serious accidents and fatal experienced at the surface metal and non-metal mines involve mobile equipment and trucks similar to the one behind us. Over-the-road haulage trucks also account for a large percentage of surface accidents and fatalities in our industry, Ray. That is one reason is of, of the utmost importance that the inspectorate do a proper and thorough examination of these trucks. The video you're about to observe will address the step-by-step -step procedures taken by an MSHA inspector to assure the safe operating condition of vehicles like this one. Two areas we want to focus on, Ray, would be the, the mechanical inspection of the truck and also the area in which the truck operates. The mechanical inspection would include the braking system, steering systems, capacity load, and other items. Over the over-the-road well, trucks also operate in variable conditions on the mine road, and we want to look at grades, berms, and road conditions. Yes, Ray, and the inspector must always keep in mind his personal safety and the safety of others that may be involved. When conducting truck inspections, ensure that the truck is not loaded, secured from movement, and in a safe, level area. As the level of highway haulage truck traffic on our nation's mine properties has increased in recent years, so have the number of serious accidents involving these vehicles. In an effort to meet this growing challenge, MSHA inspection procedure is designed to be a quick but thorough inspection of the vehicle, concentrating on critical mechanical components. Select a safe location for performing the inspection. Find a level surface on mine property away from traffic. Always approach a vehicle with caution. At the cab, stand clear of the driver's door, which could open suddenly. Do not immediately climb on the vehicle. Instead, greet the driver and identify yourself. Good morning, driver. I'm an M Shaw inspector, and we're going to do an inspection on your tractor and trailer. Would you uh, set your park brake, please? Okay, put it in neutral. My assistant here is going to put the chalks under the tractor wheels. Ask the driver to set the park brake. Then assure the vehicle will be secured from movement when the park brake is released by having the assistant chalk the wheels or by other effective means. Once this is done, ask the driver to release the park brake. Would you take your park brake with off? With everyone in the clear, observe the truck to make sure it remains stationary with the brake released. Now, ask the driver to step down while you check in the cab area. Would you please step down? Check the fire extinguisher. It should be fastened securely in place and fully charged. Before entering the truck cab, check the handrails and steps. Once you're in the driver's seat, check the driver's visibility. Then, check the vehicle's steering lash or free play. Steering lash refers to the movement or play in the steering wheel that can occur before the front tires move. To check the lash, begin with the tires pointed straight ahead. Next, turn the steering wheel in one direction until the tires just begin to pivot. Vehicles with power steering may require the engine running to turn the wheel. Place a mark on the steering wheel. Then, while holding the marker at that point, turn the wheel in the other direction until the tires again start to move. Measure the distance between the two points. This is the amount of steering lash. Excessive lash can indicate worn or loose steering components. The amount of allowable lash varies with the diameter of the steering wheel. Observe the air gauge to assure the system has built up to the correct air pressure. Before you leave the truck cab and ask the driver to return, check for loose objects and check windows and mirrors for cracks and other damage. Notice if unauthorized decals or stickers could hinder the driver's field of vision. Check the condition of seat belts. Check for proper windshield wipers and ask the driver to operate them for you. 
Have the driver check the engine brake and switches, if equipped, to determine if they function correctly. Tell the driver you want to check the service lights. The headlights, low and high beam. Also check the brake lights and tail lights and the backup lights. Instruct the driver to test the truck's backup alarm and warning device, the turn signals, and the emergency flashers. Move back to the cab and ask the driver to apply the foot, parking, right, emergency, and steering column right. hand valve brakes while you listen for air leaks inside the cab. What I want to do now is I want to check for air leaks I want you to apply your park brake and uh, okay, and uh, your trailer brakes. Okay, now your emergency. Okay, now let's do our service brakes. All right. Now I'd like to check your training and uh, your ID number, if you've got it. Then ask the driver to shut off the engine. Check the driver's certificate of training, Form 5023, to ensure that he has currently taken part in the hazard and or annual refresher training. Check for the contractor's ID number, if applicable. Before performing an inspection that involves going under the truck, the inspector must have had proper training. The truck must be properly secured from movement, and an assistant must be present to communicate instructions from the inspector to the driver. The assistant should stay in a position where both the driver and the inspector under the truck can be seen and heard at all times. Tell the driver you are going under the truck to inspect the steering system, and your assistant will indicate when to turn the steering wheel back and forth sharply. Check the following key components of the steering system to assure they are securely bolted. Note, welding of any type is not permitted on the front steering axle. Check the frame and frame assembly for cracks or any defects that may lead to the collapse of the frame. Check the gearbox, pitman arm, drag link, tie rod, and steering arm. Remember, joints that appear loose or wobbly may separate and cause a loss of steering control. Check for any worn or modified condition that interferes with free movement of a steering component, because welding on steering components is not permitted. Check ball and socket joints for any motion other than rotational between any linkage member and its attachment point of more than one eighth inch. Check this with hand pressure only. While under the truck, check the engine and exhaust areas to determine if any fire hazards exist. Continue your inspection by inspecting the vehicle's wheels and rims. Check for cracks, unseated locking rings, broken or missing lug nuts, studs, and bent or cracked rims. Bleeding rust stains from lugs may indicate looseness. When inspecting tires, check for improper inflation, serious cuts, bulges, and where ply cord is exposed. Check the tread wear with a depth gauge. Radial and bias tires must not be mixed on the steering axle and retread tires must comply with the same criteria as new tires. Check the grab rails and steps on the passenger side door. Check the exhaust system for unsecured mountings and leaks. Look for carbon deposits around seams and clamps. Remember that the exhaust system may be very hot, so do not touch or grab any part of the system. For the same reason, the exhaust system should not contact fuel, air, or electrical lines. Check the fuel tanks for unsecured mountings, leaks, or other damage. And check for missing or unsecured caps. Also check the ground below the tanks for signs of leaking fuel. Check the air and electrical lines between the tractor and trailer. The lines should be suspended and free of tangles and crimps. 
and they should have sufficient slack to allow the vehicle to turn. Rear tires shall be inspected to see that the dual tires are not touching. And without placing yourself between the tires on the tandem axles, check for debris between the tires. Spare tire or tires should be securely mounted in the back. Inspect the trailer frame for stress cracks and breaks. These areas can be welded, but welding must be done in such a way to assure that the frame maintains its integrity. Inspect the trailer tandems, tires, wheels, and suspension components the same as was done on the tractor. Check the bed latch to see if it can function properly. At the back of the trailer, check the tandem housing and braking components for any signs of looseness or leakage. As you move around the left rear of the trailer, check the bed latch, trailer tandems, tires, wheels, rims, and trailer frame as you move toward the tractor. As you approach the left side of the tractor, check the tires, wheels, rims, suspension and braking components like you did on the other side of the tractor. Check the hoist jack housing for cracked wells. And check the hydraulic oil supply lines for cracks, leaks, or excessive chafing. Also check jack retainers. Inspect the fuel tank to see that it is secure and free of leaks. And visually inspect airline connections for proper sealing. Also listen for audible air leaks. Ask the driver to step down and remove the battery cover. Check the battery holder to ensure it is securely attached. The battery should be properly secured in the holder and free of excessive corrosion, and it should always be covered. Tell the driver that you are going under the truck again and that as before, your assistant will communicate any instructions to him. Check the front suspension on both sides of the truck for indications of shifted or cracked springs. Also check for loosened shackles, missing, cracked or loose bolts or U-bolts, or spring hangers unsecured to the frame. Check for any unsecured axle positioning parts and signs of axle misalignment. While inspecting brake drums and shoes, notice if they have been contaminated with oil or grease. Check for missing, loose, cracked, or non-functioning parts on the brake system, such as brake hoses and connections, rotors and disc brake pads, brake chambers and mountings, push rods, brake drum, brake shoes, and slack adjusters. Also check for S-cam flip-over. Have the assistant instruct the driver to depress and hold the foot brake pedal to pressurize the braking system. Then check for audible air leaks around brake components and lines. Conduct the brake adjustment check on the push rods. This check is conducted by marking the push rods on all brake chambers at a point where the push rod exits the brake chamber. After all push rods are marked, prepare to measure and record the stroke on all brake chambers. If the air system is not adequate, the inspector should come out from under the vehicle so the driver can start the truck and repressurize the system up to standard operating pressure. All personnel should be in a safe location while this is being done. When the system air pressure is maintained to its maximum PSI, instruct the driver to fully apply the service brake and turn the engine off. The air pressure should be maintained between 90 and 100 PSI. Now you can go under the vehicle to measure and record the full stroke of all brake chambers. Measure from the face of the brake chamber where the push rod exits to the mark that you previously made on the push rod. Listen for air leaks as you move from wheel to wheel around the vehicle while measuring the push rod travel. After you have measured the stroke of all brake chambers, have the driver release the brakes. Compare full stroke measurements with the brake chamber data chart from the out of service criteria that shows the maximum stroke at which brakes must be adjusted for each different size brake chamber. Before beginning the fifth wheel inspection, check that the release lever is properly seated and that the safety latch is engaged. Next, Driver. check the fifth wheel movement. We're going to... During this operation, caution should be observed because if conducted improperly, it could result in serious damage to the vehicle. 
Use caution and instruct the driver carefully. Prepare the vehicle and driver by having the driver put the vehicle in gear and apply the trailer brakes. Remove the wheel chocks, right, if used, well, like and have the driver start the vehicle engine. Carefully explain the procedure to the driver. Tell him to gently rock the tractor as you watch the fifth wheel. As the tractor rocks, watch for movement between the mounting components and frame, pivot pin, and bracket and carefully watch for excessive movement between the upper and lower halves of the fifth wheel. That's Stay good. clear of the truck while doing this. Check the tractor protection valves by having the driver set the emergency valve while you observe the trailer brakes setting. Then, while observing the tractor brakes, have the driver apply the foot brake. The tractor brakes should apply. If not, the valve is defective. Driver. Finally, ask the driver to stop the engine and apply the service brakes until the air pressure drops to 50% of the governed cutout pressure, or 55 PSI, whichever is less. The low air warning device should activate. You have now finished a complete inspection of a highway haulage tractor and trailer truck. If violations are found, explain them to the driver. Try to answer any questions he might have about the inspection or about any enforcement action taken. When you have a tandem or triaxle highway haulage truck, some of the steps covered in this inspection would not be necessary. Your own good judgment and common sense, along with the main points covered here, will help you perform a thorough inspection. Your supervisor will provide you with additional information based on regulations and manufacturer's specifications. Remember, each thorough inspection that you perform may not only prevent a serious accident, but may also save a life. The purpose of this video is to aid you in your inspections of highway haulage trucks used on mine property. It is designed to supplement more in-depth class instruction that will be conducted on proper inspection procedures. Your instructor will review the out-of-service criteria and discuss any problem areas you may encounter.